Hey everybody, welcome back to Reissued. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. I am here in my kitchen, which has been like the most long and drawn out process ever. We started this renovation almost two years ago. About a year ago, this all came together and was mostly done, but there were still a few lingering projects. One of those was the kitchen island. This week, we are wrapping up that project, putting everything together. And then next week, I'm gonna do my like kitchen reveal. Obviously, we've all seen a lot of the kitchen so far, so it's gonna be less about the reveal and more about the process. And I'm gonna address the very interesting question, is my kitchen already out of style? Stay tuned for that one. But today we're focused on the kitchen island. This is an antique piece that has lived in my parents' house for many years that they got a while ago when they were traveling in Europe. You know when we talk about projects that sort of sit on the to-do list for a long time? This project has been on my parents' to-do list for like 30 years. For as long as I can remember, this dresser has been in their house and it only had one carved leg. The other carved leg had been damaged or fell off at some point. So my dad had planned to carve a new one to match, which is no small feat. When I was looking for a kitchen island for my kitchen, I wanted something that was gonna be unique or antique, something that was gonna add a little bit of individuality to a space. I think a kitchen is a space that can feel really sterile because you're having to fill it with appliances and things that are kind of like new and bright and shiny and like really usable. And so it can easily feel kind of like flat and one note and matchy matchy. So I think an island of course is a great place to incorporate something that feels a little bit more vintage and antique. So I'm certainly not the first person to do this. I'm not reinventing the wheel here. A lot of people have have turned dressers into islands. The part that I want to talk about really specifically that I think might be an interesting new addition to this is the little foot rail that we're going to put along the back of this. The stools that I'm using I thrifted at Goodwill for eight dollars a piece and I really love them. I love how they look. However, when you sit on them it's like there's not really, even though they have a foot rest, there's not really a great place to like put your feet and so you just like sit there with your feet dangling which feels really awkward and so we wanted to put a little foot rest on there if you do a little research online, they do sell these a lot of places now, you know, it's that kind of like metal bar footrest thing, but they can be quite expensive and I wanted something that was going to be customized to my piece, obviously, so that it fit the right dimensions that I wanted. And so we're going to be DIYing one of those out of some chain link fence materials. There was a rod that was in my closet that was like way too big for a hanger, but it was like the top of a chain link fence. We got some additional pieces. It's going to be really cool. Can't wait to show you. Let's jump on in. Of course, there was a lot of unexciting but important prep work that went into making this island practical. We designed and cut some simple curved back legs since the dresser only had these chunky 2x4 type blocks on the back. We also added a piece of plywood cut with a beveled edge to reinforce the bottom for added strength. Then we added a 2x4 frame in the center of the bottom to help support the weight, since the front legs would be more or less decorative. Needless to say, I didn't document this process all that well, since I didn't think I would be focusing on it that much here. Hit me up in the comments if you're trying this at home and you have questions. One more beveled 1x6 adds support to the bottom panel of the back and will give a solid place to mount our bar later. The two big holdups on this project were the countertop and the carved leg. We were waiting to cut and glue the countertop pieces until the bathroom came together since we were using the same materials for both, and the epoxy type glue that's needed to bond this type of countertop might not hold up all that well once opened. This is the sheet of white solid surface counter that went in the guest bathroom and the little half bathroom. I had originally slated this island to get a butcher block counter to match the other countertops in the kitchen since I thought some consistency would be nice, especially since the cabinet color is going to be different. But once I saw the white solid surface countertop at my local restore for $100, the plan to use it here came together. I think that putting a bright white element in the center of the room is perfect in this space to balance out the white tile around the perimeter. White walls with all dark elements in the center could feel very unbalanced and heavy. This brings some lightness and contrast to the center of the room. The carved legs were an off-camera battle that my dad took on. He ended up using a Dremel with multiple tips to try to match the original legs as closely as possible. He finished them up last week when I was in Florida. Don't they look great? Let's put them on the dresser. Now let's move on to the footrest. For this project, we use a standard piece of chain link fence rail that used to be in my closet, two one and a quarter inch railing supports, 
and two post caps that fit my rail. We will be screwing them in with some roofing screws since they're short and they have large heads and washers. Hold the bracket in place on one side to get a sense of the placement you like. Then mark the top hole, drill it out, and insert the screw. Finally, use a level to be sure it's straight up and down, and then drill and insert the bottom screw. One side down. To place the other side, you could hold your pole in place and level across, or just eyeball the placement to match the other side. That's what we did in this case, since the wood piece we added was fairly level, and it would look really off for the placement of supports on the wood not to match up on both sides. Once we got the brackets in place, we could decide on a length for the pole and cut it off using a hacksaw. It was helpful to draw a line around using the bracket in order to get a straight cut. A crooked cut will affect how the end cap goes on. With the cut made, we can pop on the end caps and finish out the structure. Okay, so now that we have all the pieces in play, we can work on painting this thing. I've gone back and forth on this a lot. After having stripped down things that were painted to make them not painted, it feels very permanent to make this decision, and this is an older, real, genuine antique piece. So I feel a little bit, you know, it's, it's a tough thing, but I have tried multiple things on my mood board for this room, and I really think that having this be sort of a black, distressed look will anchor the room and kind of pull all of the elements together. One thing that I think is interesting to think about with kitchen design is like the colors that are in the appliances. Even though my appliances are stainless, they do have quite a bit of black on them. And so I knew from the get-go that I wanted to incorporate black as a part of the color scheme in this room. I mean, I like it anyway. I think it adds contrast, and I'm putting a little bit of black in each room. But I think that actually having the black on this piece in this room is gonna help those appliances feel even more integrated. But also I think with the lighter rugs in this space and the stools, I think the wood is gonna really pop more off of that black background and offer a little bit of contrast. So we're painting it black. First step here is to remove all my clothes. Remove all my clothes. Believe it or not, most of my clothes are still in this dresser. I have been living out of my kitchen to get dressed every day. Some of you may know I do have the Pax wardrobe. We are in the process of getting that all set up together. So eventually all the clothes will go in there, but we're still in that process. So um, we're gonna move everything temporarily for now uh, just to get that cleared out so we can paint it. And I can kind of free up that storage to really finish off the kitchen for good. The paint I'm using is the Sherwin-Williams shade Caviar in an eggshell finish. I bought this paint for my back door since I wanted a strong black to offer some contrast. I liked the warmth of this particular black. I didn't want anything that felt too gray or blue. Let's start with the drawer fronts. I'm applying the paint only with a brush rather than a roller because I want kind of an uneven streaky finish. I use a smaller brush to detail around the edges and try to keep my brush strokes with the grain of the wood. Once I cover everything, I go over some areas again to achieve a slightly more uniform look, but most areas just got one pass. Now let's repeat on the sides and back. My inspiration for the paint job was this Pottery Barn piece that I modified to go in my mood board for this room early on. I like the distressed looking black painted finish that felt very lived in and multidimensional. I think a super clean paint job would look too flat, especially in this dark shade. While I wait for this to dry, I move over to spray painting the bar pieces. I'm using this oil rubbed bronze shade. I want the color to be almost disappearing into the black piece, but with enough metallic shine to give it some dimension. 
This color is perfect for that. To paint the pole, I string it up on a ladder so that we can cover all sides in one go. However, the wind was so intense that I had to stop before I finished anyway. No sense in having all my paint blow away. Back inside to cover any areas along the bottom that might be visible underneath. So finishing up this project today, I just went outside and finished spray painting all of the items. It's not so windy today, so I was able to get that done. And so now I'm gonna go in and do just a little bit of sanding on my dresser, just to kind of like give it a little bit of a distressed look in a way that looks natural. But mostly I noticed that the areas that were waxed took the paint a little bit differently than the areas that weren't. The areas that weren't just kind of soaked up the paint and so it's a very solid kind of flat finish, whereas the waxed areas look a little bit more shiny and a little bit more translucent. So I'm hoping that with the sandpaper, I can just kind of even it out and make it all feel a little bit more distressed and unified and less opaque and solid. Let's give it a go. While the areas that had been waxed prior to paint barely had to be touched with a worn out 220 grit sandpaper to remove the paint, the unwaxed areas had to be scrubbed with a coarse 80 grit paper to create the effect. I'm focusing on the corners, edges, and high points and rubbing with the grain mostly. This creates an effect that's both visually pleasing since it augments the natural highlights and shadows, but also realistically aged since the high points are the parts that would naturally be scuffed and bumped. It's a subtle difference, but I think it brought the piece together nicely. Let's reattach the pole and finish this up. Did you take my screw, Queenie? Did you take my screw? All right, everybody, we're done with this project. I'm really excited about how it turned out. I think it's gonna really bring the whole room together. Of course, let me know what you think in the comments. If you wanna see more videos and more projects like this, hit the like button. If you wanna keep up to date with my renovation, definitely hit the subscribe button and check out the home makeover playlist. I'm putting all the videos related to my home renovation in that playlist so you can just watch it all at once. And stay tuned for next week's video where I'm gonna show you the whole kitchen process. That before and after is crazy. I cannot wait to show you the side-by-side -side comparison where we started to where we are now. Don't miss it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you soon.